Well, as you no doubt have noticed, I've posted some pictures from Persona 4 on my website, and a lot of you asked what I thought about that game. So, hey, fair enough. I, I mentioned briefly that I, would, I had just started playing it, but I didn't know if I was going to stick with it. I'm glad I did. But I would like to follow up. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a little bit on this one, because I'm not sure how much I told you about why I quit Persona 3, but I did. Um, mainly it was because I really got sick. It, it got really repetitive, And I will say this for the entire Persona series, is that you will definitely get your money's worth in terms of, like, gameplay value. Persona 3, I would say, is at least 75 hours, probably pushing 90, which is... That's insane for a game. Especially, you know, even a game like Dragon Age, which is pushing... How much do you... I haven't even finished Dragon Age, but what would you say? 30 hours tops? That's pretty impressive that a game is will, is able to go that long. Now, the reason it goes on that long is because about 80% of it is level grinding, and the other 20% is is basically the boss fights. And that's why I quit, was the boss fights are balls-bustingly hard, and they also take about 45 minutes at minimum. And that's just that's, that's when you get to about the three-quarters point of the game. It, that is really remarkable. Um, I got to the Hangman boss, which is actually kind of a marathon boss where you have to fight some mini bosses before that, which takes about 20 minutes as well. And that boss is like this really progressive whittling down procedure where you can only hit it in a very specific window when you knock it down, and then it, it takes like 45 minutes. It's insane. And that's not even the last boss. Uh, I... I Basically what happened was I gave up, and because I, I wanted to see how the story ended, I watched a Let's Play online, and the last boss takes... How long, how long do you think that one takes? About an hour? At, probably 90 minutes, at least, to fight through that boss. No stopping, no save points, no continues, no rest period. You die, you start over. Isn't that great? Hang on, let me make sure some... Yeah. It was that was really something, and it really, people were telling me the plot to that one was worth the wait, worth the payoff, and worth the level grinding. It's not. It's really not. Um, I actually thought the answer, the the second, like the expansion pack to that one, had a much more satisfying story. But at the same time, I really hated that one as well. I actually thought um, it really helps that they've kind of established these characters that you've known for so long, and you kind of like them, and. You know, you, it it really does feel comfortable that with these characters, but at the same time, about the halfway point of the answer, the characters start acting really out of character and really belligerent and immature and assholish, uh, just just really bizarre. Where the, the, basically the point is, they start fighting each other at at this at some point in the game to get each other's keys, and you just you go why? It, it really seemed bizarre, and you really started to hate some of these characters, and, yeah. I mean, it, 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 very, it seemed like a very contrived circumstance for the plot, where they could have just cooperated and done something sensible, but no, they had to go pull, pull a Marvel Civil War and fight each other, and I didn't like it. But Persona 4. I say this without exaggeration, that it is probably the best Shin Megami Tensei game I've ever played. And how far back does that go? It goes back to Nocturne, which is the early probably the earliest PlayStation 2 game. I haven't played any of the really hardcore Japanese imports. I haven't played uh, the early console games. I'm sure there was something on the Famicom or uh, like handheld or something like that. And I haven't played the online game. But uh, this game, it basically takes everything that I hated about 3 and improves upon it. Uh, How so? For one, the plot. I, I, I... really didn't like the plot to three because there almost was no plot up until the about halfway point, which is a long time, like 45 hours of gameplay, to ask somebody to invest when they don't really know what they're doing. The entire plot of three, and in fact the entire plot of most of the Shin Megami Tensei series, is, hey, there's a tower! Let's go climb it! And it's kind of just a more mature-themed version of Pokemon. And some would say that's the point. It doesn't. It isn't meant to have a really deep, involving storyline. And indeed, uh, Nocturne had essentially no plot up to about the seven eighths mark, where it gets really, really awesome, and you're glad you stuck with it. I was glad I did, but Persona Three, I didn't find that. But Four involves you in a really good plot right away, where it, I just 
part of me really likes the feel of you know validation when you've accomplished something, having a goal in mind, doing something, and having your actions affect others in the in the story, feeling like you matter. And I don't like being a spectator. I don't like just kind of crawling a dungeon. I don't like bashing monsters for no reason. This one gives you a reason. It feels like you're saving lives. It feels like you're saving characters. And you, you, you know what you're doing. And it doesn't insult your intelligence with some big tower. The levels are differentiated enough to where it feels like you're entering new areas. It didn't just feel like 200 floors of the same random, like, it's kind of weird to say the same random layout, but all the floors felt really the same, even though they were random. They just kind of felt like the same organized, you know, eight to ten blocks of various things with monsters in them, and just with different colors every every 20 floors. This one feels like you're, you are exploring finite and yet themed dungeons, and I'll tell you the truth, they probably are the same random type things, but they're kept short enough, sweet enough, and themed enough to where it felt original. Um, I thought the social link system is much more streamlined and much less annoying, much less of a hassle to keep track of. Persona 3, it felt like everyone was just nagging me constantly for a moment of their time. Like every weekend, I could never get anything done because I had like five friends calling my fucking phone. Like, can we hang out? And then if you didn't hang out with them, you hurt their fucking feelings. And then you had to go kiss and make up. And, like, deal- dealing with people you really hated most of the time. Just so you didn't piss anybody off. Just kind of maintain... It was just really annoying. In this game, I haven't yet run into that. Where I will still get a call on the weekend. But it's only from, like, one person. I don't really feel pressured to hang out with these people. The one weakness, I think... Now, now again, I haven't played through the whole game, and I'm not sure. But... I think you'll really be pressured to, you'll you'll feel like kind of self-imposed pressure to deal only with your party members, improve their social links, because when you do that, you unlock combat abilities that are really, really cool and useful, and I don't think you get those abilities when you unlo- when you start leveling up other people, like your the high school orchestra or the athletics club. I don't think you get much in the way of of combat benefits. You can level up your monsters more effectively, but... You know, having Chie able to drop kick a bitch out of the combat in one hit, I'd rather take that, believe me. Um, what else did I like? The music? I think the music is much more diverse. It's very original and very toe-tapping. Some of it sounds like department store music, but it's it's still really effective. And um, I liked it better than Persona 3. I know a lot of people said that Persona 3, its main differentiating feature was the music. And it is. But with a game with about 90 hours of playtime, that music, no matter how catchy it is, gets on your nerves after about the 30th hour, at least. Uh, And basically what I did was, for about two-thirds of Persona 3, I would mute the TV and put on Slacker Radio or something something on the radio. But this game, it probably will get old, I'm not gonna lie. But the voice acting is good enough, at least in my opinion, uh, and the music is good enough that it hasn't gotten old yet. And that's good. It, uh, with one exception. Teddy. <sighs> Teddy. Teddy, I would like to set you on fire and send you straight to hell, as well as the people who designed you and voice acted you. I would like to stave your head in with a crowbar, rip your zipper fucking head off. And that's not an ethnic slur. He really does have a zipper head. <laughs> I'm not, that sounded really bad, but yeah. Um... He Teddy is this like a hollow stuffed mascot with a zipper neck head that is hollow and he's empty and he wouldn't be so bad. He doesn't really reach Jar Jar Binks esque qualities, except for the fact that he narrates every fucking round of the game. Like, every combat, he's like, You've only got two more enemies left! Hurry! Or, the, um, Oh no, Sensei is poisoned! Somebody heal him! Just, like... It, every round. Ah, you you just want to kill. And what what's weird is the music is actually so good, you, you, you kind of want to listen to the music, and yet Teddy is like... He's like, Hey, listen! And just, no, I hate that fucker. Um... What else? Oh, I know I'm forgetting something. There were really, there's some really bizarre decisions that I'm not sure 
bother me as much as they should, but I haven't finished this level yet where one of these characters starts having a fantasy where he is really, like, floppy-handed, flamboyantly gay, like, and I mean, like, wearing a G-string, crooning around a spa, greasing himself, like, oh, we're going to have a fun time, it's going to be fabulous, you know, just... At the, that doesn't really bother me. Maybe it should. But the whole point of the dungeon is it's supposed to be kind of a perversion of his deep, dark secrets. And so you get the impression this guy has some issues he hasn't yet dealt with, and that's being manifested by almost a demonically gay version of himself. <laughs> Which sounds really weird, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't have a unique... Pers- My perspective is... I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I shudder in anticipation to actually run around the dungeon just to see how they're going to make the the super gay dungeon look and how the boss looks at the end. I don't know. But I can definitely say it's a first for me. I've I've never run around inside a gay dungeon before and, and fought demons. I remember being really uh, stunned when I saw... Uh, I remember playing Nocturne when I saw this thing called an Incubus, which is this little imp with this huge cock. It's like it's it's flying around on the screen, and it's got this enormous spike dick, or at least it's got like the it's it's got a big spiked cod piece. But man, if I was playing that when I was twelve and my parents walked in, I'd have been like, um, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, kind of a bizarre series in some ways, but um, it works. I, I like how oh, the biggest thing that I like in this game. It's gonna sound silly, but. Uh, I like how the characters don't make me want to punch them. I remember really hating the uh, the characters in in three, and the fact that it introduces a warp system where not a warp but a fast travel option where like if you're in the school and you want to go to town, all you got to do is press the square button and go there. That is so considerate and useful. I can't even tell you. And maybe it's just laziness, or maybe I'm kind of coddled that way, but I really hate running around the same screen over and over and over again just to get to the same spot. Uh, Ripper being a really good example of that, where Ripper goes like beyond the pale of running around the same scenery over and over and over again. Ripper does this thing where it will literally take five minutes to get from one end of the hall to another, like especially the hospital where you have to go through the... through the lobby, up an elevator, down the hall, down that hall, through a door, and every you know every twenty feet it stops and it's like, do you want to turn around? Do you want to keep going? You have to click. You know, that's why I like the fast travel feature. Ripper would have been about twenty minutes long if it had a fast travel feature, but anyway, pardon me. That's Persona Four. I would definitely check it out. And good Christmas gift, by the way. Um, this is. You know, I'm kind of into RPGs, and I love turn-based RPGs, and I will I will pretty much pick up a turn-based RPG whenever I can find it. And I had not heard of this until very recently, about maybe a year ago, that, you know, when I started playing Persona 3. And I remember, I remember seeing Persona 3 and 4 at the same time, and I played 3 first because I wanted to know what was going on in 4, which ultimately was not necessary because they have nothing at all to do with each other. And But yeah, I think 4 is way, way better. I like it a lot better. Now, it does have... <laughs> uh, I will admit, it's been a while since I've pitched a controller across the room just because I don't like to break my controllers. But I, th- there, the difficulty in this game leaps ahead in really brutal and unfair... just. Just lurches forward where it's like you'll be having a really good time, really good time, and you're having a good time, and then all of a sudden this boss will just kick your fucking nuts out through your nose, and you'd be like, "What the fuck? I just got schooled, man!" And you'll you'll fight it again, waste another twenty minutes, and sure enough, you just get in your ass pounded, and you're like, "What the fuck is going on?" And what was really surprising was I mentioned I was having some problems to some other people, and they were they instantly were like, "Shadow Yukiko, right?" I went, "Yeah." How did you know? And they're like, Shadow Yukiko was an uber bitch, man. Well, I, I just blew my mind how like everyone had problems with Shadow Yukiko. Yeah, she is the first point in that game where you will just... You will want to scrunch up your fucking controller in like a little ball of epoxy and just whip that bitch across the room. That, and what's really, what's really a bummer about the, the Persona series is that pretty much the only answer to any problem you're having in that game is to level up a shitload. 
and that's the way it is here. Now, it doesn't do it nearly as much as 3 did, but you, st you will have to do sometimes where you dedicate two or three hours to just leveling and kind of breeding monsters. But I think that's always been the way with the Persona series. If you're having trouble, go back and level. Don't try to... You can try to kind of finagle your way, and there's a real feel feeling of accomplishment when you have beaten a boss about two or three levels before you really should have, but it's a lot of frustration, and, uh, yeah. Shadow Yukiko's a bitch. <laughs> I did not like her. What's, what's really a bummer is they'll tend to pick on one of your character's weaknesses, so they'll get extra attacks. And there's really, uh, oftentimes there's not much you can do about that. I remember, I, I think Shadow Yukiko picks on Chie's fire weakness, and the only way to really combat that is to breed a Pokemon that has a spell that negates a fire weakness. And so I had to do that for a while. That was, that was what annoyed me, was I had to get a fire weakness Pokemon <laughs> and cast a spell. And I had to do that basically every three rounds, which annoyed me. Anyway, that was Persona 4. Check it out.